everybody, Chris here. Welcome back to another episode of Woodmere Estate Revival. Today we are working next to the pool, building a retaining wall next to the pool patio. Uh, we're getting ready to install a fence around the pool patio, and so we're going to have a uh, nice area here that'll be secure, that'll keep random kids and animals from wandering into the pool area. But we wanted to secure this end of the hillside because it, uh, some of it was built with fill to make the pool patio a little bit bigger. So we needed to be able to retain that fill a little bit. It had already been washing a little bit off the point of the patio. So we're gonna build a brick retaining wall with the old brick pavers uh, that we took up from around the pool. So everything old is new again, right? We're gonna repurpose those. Uh, so Chad's here helping me this weekend. It's Labor Day weekend. He's giving me a hand with this project uh, before he gets on the road to head home. So yesterday evening, we dug uh, the hole for our footer. And today we're mixing concrete and going ahead and pouring it down in uh, to put our footer in place. We'll let that set uh, and then I'll start laying some brick tomorrow, hopefully. So let me show you exactly what we got going on. All right, so here you can see the ditch we dug yesterday and a lot of the dirt, unfortunately, went over the hill. I'm gonna have to go to get that out of the lower ditch sometime. But uh, this is the issue right here. This area has been washing a little bit. Uh, the patio comes to a corner right here next to the pool. And we've got it sloped away from the pool to handle the uh, rain and the drainage from the pool. But it all comes to this point and then it just kind of washes down uh, the edge of the hill here. So this area has been washing a little bit and it was washing out from underneath uh, the edge of the patio. So we don't want that to settle at some point and crack. Uh, so we're going ahead and building a retaining wall here just to hold this corner in. The wall is going to be a little bit shorter uh, than the height of the patio. It's not going to be super high, maybe 24 inches. Uh, but that'll be enough to keep this soil back and to retain that and keep it from washing here. Plus, it'll be a nice uh, architectural feature. We're going to build it out of brick, and it'll be painted white, just like our columns here in the front. So it'll be a nice feature. We just got two bags in the hole here. Chad's over at the other end there, mixing another two in the wheelbarrow. We'll go check in on him here in just a second. But uh, we dug, dug down to solid, and we drove some rebar in, put a little gravel in. So we should have a good, firm footer uh, to build our new brick wall on. All right, Chad's working hard over here, mixing up some quick read in a wheelbarrow. The, uh, don't have enough space to get the wheelbarrow over there to dump it in, so we're just having to mix it and put it in a bucket and haul it over there by hand, dump it in, spread it out, so on and so forth. Making good use of the uh, Harley utility cart there to haul the concrete and stuff from around from the driveway. Doing good work, Chad. Yeah, man. Good workout this morning. Always getting into a good project here at Woodmere, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Okay. Amber's keeping an eye on the kids. I'm working hard. Whew. Reading a book and sitting in the shade. Actually, I am consulting Martha Stewart on how to organize closets. Oh, okay. So I am actually working. Okay, good. Well, I smell a future episode with uh, closet organization. Maybe. Yeah. And we got some painters down at the end of the house there. They are priming the brick addition. So we're making some progress on that as well. That was one of the projects we were going to tackle. But decided not to due to time and we got the kids in the pool hanging out chad's son charles is here so hanging out with grant reed in the pool they're having a good time so amber's keeping an eye on them too aren't you all right keep up the good work <laughs> organization and lifeguard yeah how about that all right so we got four buckets or four bags of uh, concrete in the uh, hole so far and just put the level on it there just to make sure our footer is going in level uh, we'll end up with probably about six inches of concrete all the way across there, which should be a good footer uh, for all the more big the wall is going to be. It's not going to be super tall, but uh, we want to have a good footer in there, so it's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Don't want to have to redo this in my lifetime, so I uh, always rather put more concrete in there than I need than less. So Chad went to get uh, some more mix, uh, more dry mix, and we're going to do another wheelbarrow load. Once we get that done, we'll go ahead and get the uh, rest of this filled in and leveled out. All right, we got six bags in the hole. So we're gonna put two more in this end and that should take care of it. We've been keeping it level all the way across here. That way it'll be a lot easier to get my wall leveled up once I start laying brick. So footer's looking good. Again, it's gonna be about uh, six inches based on the final elevation here. So it should be a good heavy footer. Keep our brick solidly anchored on the side of the hill here. And we dug down to solid. It was real rocky and everything once we got down in there a little bit. So uh, that ought to do a real nice job for us. Chad's over there mixing another batch. So I'm gonna go give him a hand and we'll uh, finish this up. 
All right, we got all the concrete in the ditch. That's eight bags. And we got it all leveled up. Used my uh, screed board there and a level and made sure that everything was level. Wanted to start out level rather than having to try to get the brick level with a bunch of mortar underneath. We'll start out with a nice level footer. That'll make things so much easier. This should uh, set up. This is quick crete. Uh, should set up and cure overnight. Hopefully, if the weather's decent, be able to start laying brick tomorrow. Chad's cleaning out the wheelbarrow and uh, cleaning up all the tools and everything. And then we're going to call it a day, take a dip in the pool, and then uh, he's going to have to pack up and head home. So I'll get back with you guys hopefully tomorrow, and we'll start laying brick. All right, so I'm back out working on the wall this evening. It's uh, getting dark, as you can see. But I used the uh, utility cart parked behind me there on the pool patio to go down to the other end of the road and pick up a bunch of bricks that we scavenged from around the pool. So everything's coming back. Uh, those bricks are really heavy. They are 10 pounds a piece. They feel like vintage brick pavers, like they would have used to pave a street. I mean, they are definitely handmade. Uh, they're definitely irregular, you know, so they've got a real vintage feel. I think it's gonna make a great wall. Um, gives it that really vintage, original feel. I said that enough, right? Vintage, original. Anyways, let's take a look. I got it dry stacked up here so you can actually see roughly what it's gonna look like and uh, give a little bit better idea how things are gonna lay out tomorrow once we actually start putting the mortar to it. All right, so there's all the ones I got stacked in place. Again, uh, just loaded them one at a time in the back of the cart there, two at a time, I guess, one in each hand. I couldn't find my brick tongs. I got them around here somewhere, but I couldn't find them. So I had to carry them one at a time, or one in each hand. But that's roughly what it's gonna look like. We're gonna do a double layer of brick. And you can see that these are not typical bricks. These are heavy, thick, dense, full bricks. And I swear they're you know, vintage street pavers. I have no idea where they came from, but they are stinking heavy. Uh, we weighed them. Again, they're about 10 pounds a piece. If you guys remember from our earlier videos, we uh, pulled all those up by hand, loaded them in the tractor, and hauled them down to the other end of the road and stacked them up for future use. Well, here we go. Uh, we found a good use for them. So we're gonna build some retaining walls with them. But I'm gonna do this uh, double row of bricks, and that'll give us plenty of strength and there'll be plenty of mortar in between them all and in between both rows. So that'll be nice and strong. It's not gonna be real tall. I wish that they were as long as two are wide, if that makes sense, because then I could do a row, you know, front to back to kind of tie it together. Uh, but they're shorter than two of them are next to each other. So that doesn't work. Uh, so anyways, it's a bit of a, a staggered pattern and you can see they don't exactly line up all the way across here. I'm gonna to have to cut some pieces, you know, to fill in at the end here, but they're gonna work. And I may pick up some uh, brick ties like you would use to hold brick onto the exterior of a house and lay some of those in between just to give them a little bit more rigidity. But that's pretty much what it's gonna look like. I dry stacked everything that I uh, loaded up in the back of the cart. And again, they're not laid out exactly where they're gonna to be tomorrow but I at least wanted to kind of lay them out, get a feel for how it's gonna work. And then uh, tomorrow I'll cut some of them. I'm gonna see how they'll cut with a mason's chisel. No idea if it's gonna work or not. I uh, may have to resort to saw cutting them. I hope not, because that's gonna be a lot more time consuming. But uh, we'll see how it works. So tomorrow we'll pick back up where we left off here. We're gonna mix a bucket of mortar, and then we'll go ahead and start setting these things in mortar, leveling them out as we go, spacing them out as we go. And we'll have a nice semicircular retaining wall when it's all said and done. Not exactly sure how tall I'm going to make it at this point. We're going to make sure it's nice and level side to side. And then, kind of like you see right here, every time we lay a brick, every time we lay a row, we'll step it back a little bit. You know, a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, something like that. And because uh, you want your bricks, your blocks, whatever, leaning back into the hill instead of being perfectly vertical, perfectly plumb. Otherwise, the pressure over time could begin to tip your wall. So if it kind of leans back into the wall, you give yourself some mechanical advantage there. We're not talking about holding back a whole lot of dirt here. I mean, this is not, again, be a, it's not gonna be a real tall wall. It's probably gonna be, let's see, that's three high, 
uh, the way it's laid out right there. It's probably gonna end up being about, I'd say six or eight rows altogether. So we're not talking about a real high wall, just enough really to kind of shore this corner up a little bit uh, so we can put a little bit of fill in this corner and then kind of divert some of the water so that uh, you know it runs in different directions because right now it's kind of all coming off this point and washing dirt out from underneath it. So once we get the wall put up, we'll go ahead and fill in behind it with gravel so that it'll drain. And then uh, beyond that, we'll go ahead and uh, fill up with soil. And that way it'll hold the hill, but it'll drain well. We'll have water pressure behind it. And then we'll be able to kind of level this off a little bit so we can set our fence post. So it's getting dark and I'm gonna go ahead and get the cart back to the house. Gotta take the trash to the curb. Love having this cart. This thing's so great. Uh, clearly it needs some cosmetic work. The bed's falling apart. Um, but you know, the floor of the bed's metal, the body's metal. Uh, the nose of it is fiberglass, but it's just cool. It's a 1969 Harley Davidson DC. Uh, that's the, the type of cart, the model of the cart. It's gas powered, it's got a 250cc Harley Davidson engine, similar to what they had on their dirt bikes or their dirt track race bikes at the time. And the cool thing about it is that the engine starts in forward or reverse. There's no transmission. That's not exactly true. There's a belt drive transmission. It's got a viscosity clutch uh, full of oil. And then as the RPMs spool up, the pulley halves squeeze together, which moves the belt up the pulley, which increases your gear ratio, basically. So faster the motor spins, the more the belt rides up the pulley. And in effect, it uh, causes the car to go faster. So really cool setup but uh, no transmission, so it's got a lever here on the floor, and that's your forward and reverse lever. And in the position it is right now, the starter motor starts it in forward, and in the other position, the starter motor reverses and starts the engine backwards. <laughs> so it's, it's a really cool design, a very simple design, but I, I have a lot of fun with it. It's, it's a lot, it's a joy to use it around the property. So like I said, I'm gonna go get the trash cans and take them to the curb call this project done for tonight. Tomorrow after work, I'll get up here, mix up a bucket of mortar, and we'll start setting some of these bricks.